Hi, how you doing? Justin here. We're having another silly start to the day with too many jokes, but hopefully that'll make for a fun guitar lesson. How are you, Tammy? Good, thank you. Good. Uh, you've been songwriting, finger styling, transcribing, all sorts of stuff. Yep. Yeah? Yep. Uh, where should we start? Let's start with the finger style. Okay. How's it gone? Good. Um, it didn't take me too long to pick up the second pattern. Good. Um, but I found it quite hard to find songs it would fit with. Okay. So some of them had chord changes and I struggled to figure out during the finger pattern how to change it if it wasn't quite like one, two, three, four, okay. one, two, let's, three. Let's have a little look. So let's check the pattern first of all. So can you what, just like play... like a normal pattern or Yeah, a... just, yeah the, the finger style, folk finger style pattern, whatever you've been working on. Let's see what it is, how it's working. Good. Excellent. Okay. On the D chord, normally you'd play the D note first, so you'd move all of your hand down. Oh, okay. That's it. That's it? Yes? And then what yes. Do? yes. Yeah. Exactly. That would be the normal state of affairs for a D. It doesn't really matter if you play that low A note. It makes it sound like it's a D slash A, like a D with an A bass note. Okay. Sounds fine. Uh... The big thing with that, and the thing to watch out for when you're practicing, is the consistency of the thumb. Okay. So that becomes the driver. So when you go, having this. Yeah, so it's really Really, it kind of that should be the thing. If you practice it with a metronome, you would put the metronome at the speed of the thumb and really try and lock in with that to make it super consistent. It, one of the things with the folk finger style, there's a couple of different pathways within it, but one that I think is worth having a little think about is that the bass part is almost like a separate instrument. Yeah. So the, that's the bass, and yeah. then the the finger style part is the chords, kind of. And if you think of it in that way, that might help you with the one, the consistency of the bass, realizing the bass is just going dun, 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 or whatever the pattern is. Yeah. Uh, and then the other parts are like twinkly in there. And they, that's why they can change while the bass stays specific. And the, if the bass is going, the bass is doing that, the fingers could be going. All sorts of different mm. variations of the pattern that the fingers do but if the bass is keeping the consistent thing yeah. going then that drives the song along okay so rather than Try kind of learning it like a whole it's almost like two separate yeah and and to to realize that if the fingers go wrong a little bit it doesn't matter so much as the bass the bass wants to the bass needs to be real solid and yeah. the fingers can change and do different patterns and it doesn't really matter but the bass has to stay like on Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Again, one more time. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay, now I'm going to show you another. You've got it. Yeah. There's another little part to this that can make a difference, and that is how you place this hand. Now, at the moment, it's floating. And in some songs, having a floating hand and having all of the, ni the notes nice and open is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Other times, to help with that distinction between the bass and the chord part, you want to add a little bit of mute. So if I just play the same thing again, but without the mute, so... <laughs> Yeah, 
now that the difference is here. Oh, he's <laughs> just trying to do the same progression. Now what you're aiming for is this little part of your hand here, either, either here or here, it depends on the shape of your hand, it, we're all slightly different. You want to feel that just a little bit, let's just do it on a, a C chord or an A minor or whatever easy chord. So just do the bass first of all, and you want to feel it a bit muted, not like, it's not this. <laughs> you don't want it to be like where well, you don't hear it, you've got to find the point. Hear how different, like here's too much? Yeah. If I slide it right off, then there's none at all. And you're after that sweet spot where it's just a little bit muted. That's it, a little bit back. That's it. There you go. About there. Maybe just a touch thought. That's it. Good. Can you do it louder? Okay, no, it's just to do with the, the, the sound of the guitar because this one sounds loud, a lot louder exactly, to me. And I'm like, yeah. oh, hang on, is it is it the instrument or you're not playing it hard enough? But you, that looked like you were pushing it too hard. So, yeah. Find that spot again. There you go. Good. Now slow it down and see if you can add the pattern in. Now, it feels different, doesn't it? Why? What's happened? To the flattened the back of my hand. Yeah, but it feel, what else feels different about it? Because you look, it looked a little more awkward for you then. The position of your hand has changed, mm. so the way that the fingers were contacting the string before is mm. now different. Yeah. Yeah, so instead of it being like, when you when you're up like this, the fingers had more space to do stuff. When you've moved it down, it, it's all a little bit more cramped. Yeah. So what you find is that when you're doing this style with the muted bass, you need another whole batch of practice for your fingers to find the right mechanics of it. It is yeah. the same essentially, mm. but it'll feel different when you're doing here compared to see the fingers are kind of moving differently. Here they're just a little bit more cramped. They can't float around as much. Yeah, it's it's not harder. It's just a little different. Okay, again. That's it. A little bit less mute. Yeah, so move the hand that way a bit more. A bit more. A bit more. That's it. Good. Try and think of the consistency of the thumb. That's it. So a bit of time with the metronome doing that. It's gonna be really super helpful. Find it find a tempo where it's slow enough to be super comfortable. What you don't want it to be is like feeling like you're chasing it. Yeah. It wants to feel, the bass note wants to feel right on the metronome. And a really good trick is to set the metronome at a volume level where if you do it exactly right, you don't hear it. Okay. Yeah? yeah. So you want to be practicing, you're like, oh, is the metronome stopped? Yeah. Ideally, yeah? yeah? yeah cool. Because if you, do, if you can, if you synchronize with the metronome perfectly and play it exactly the same time, and you've set the volume right, you just won't hear the metronome at all until you go wrong or speed up or slow down, then it'll become apparent again. Mm. Make sense? Yep. Um, did you realize that you can make up any fingers order that you like so long as the thumb stays consistent? No. I... So, so long, as long as you're doing this, you could... changing the thumbnail to stay on the one note but actually which is probably not a bad place to start for you if you just get that going on the one note it, 
it literally can be any order. It's really funny. I haven't played fingerstyle guitar for a little while. And because I've been learning <laughs> guitar left handed, I've got all of these calluses on the ends of my fingers. It and it's like, oh, this feels all different. I can't, I can't feel the strings in the same way that I could. It's kind of annoying. I hadn't oh, experienced dear. that before. I'm going to have to do a whole bunch more fingerstyle practice to get used to where those calluses are. How weird. Anyway. Um, and it's the same with what, once you're going with this pattern and you've got it moved it. And my thumb kept on moving. It keeps wanting to go back to one note. I've practiced this for so long, Sam. It's coming back now. So all I'm doing is just concentrate on that staying the same. just trying to keep that going while the fingers do whatever they feel like okay to get to that point you want to make up some patterns on your own and yep. the easiest way to do that is just get some tab paper and yep. write the base on there and then choose where you're going to put some notes okay just anywhere. can be kind of random but yep. if you try it and it's random it doesn't sound good then just change them to go somewhere that sounds good because okay. ultimately it wants to sound nice yeah but doing it manually on a piece of paper and literally just writing down zero two zero two and then going okay on the first note with the first note i want to have the thinner string yeah. then i don't want anything with the second note but after that i'm going to have the second string so you're going or whatever you, you can make up the write it down figure something out and then practice it train okay. your hands up to play that pattern cool make sense yep sounds good so you said that there was a problem applying it to songs where the chords were changing where you didn't think they were. Mm. So yeah. What, what's an example of that? Um, so there's this one. It's got a cap over. It doesn't matter, but it oh. goes timing wise. It's. Uh -huh. And I found it really difficult to figure out the changes on the picking. Yeah. <laughs> so. If you if the chords aren't changing on the beat or on the half a beat, you have to do something to the pattern. It, yeah. it, it won't end up staying consistent. Okay. With practice, you'll f just find a way to do it. Yeah. So uh, what's that do again with the click? Right, okay. So it's that final change, the first part, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, yeah. three, four. So that's that, yeah. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Ah. having to change the pattern I'm, I'm still keeping the thumb consistent but it doesn't feel nice so I'd almost <laughs> in that for me applying that pattern to it Does it's it like fit? square peg round hole thing it's just like not well that's what I found so I then yeah thought just and then I went through, I found like an old covers list from like six uh -huh. years ago and just tried the finger style with each one and some of them yep. it just doesn't fit and others oh yeah yeah just no of course yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. that's um but that's just a case of just using the, the right thing in the right place okay sorry about that delivery uh dude was there um we were talking about uh finger style appropriate songs so uh there's loads of choices for any time you play any song. There's loads of different ways of approaching it that will affect the sound and the vibe and everything else mm. about it. So you can take a Britney Spears song and play it on acoustic guitar like Travis did with Hit Me Baby One More Time at Glasto, and it sounds amazing. It's a yeah. great acoustic song, but it's really far removed from the original huge synth production mm. thing. Mm. And just on the guitar, it can really change a, th a song's feel if you're using a fingerstyle pattern uh, or a heavy strumming pattern or a percussive hit or whatever. Those things will really change the mood. Yeah. So 
it's a good idea. What you said that you did, like taking a, an old set list and just playing through all the songs is a great way to discover which is the one that's going to work appropriately or not. But know that it will change the whole vibe of it anyway, that it might be like, it, it might fit technically, but like spoil the flavour of the tune. It might just be a completely different. Yeah, it might be completely different, cool. Like, oh, wow, this is like an awesome, v completely different version of that song. So it becomes your own version of it if you liked it that way. Mm. So you just have to try them. That's the, the long and short of it is. Yep. Um, as you explore more patterns and more techniques and more ways of using the finger style thing, you'll find that some will be more appropriate than others and that you might try one and go, eh, no, not this one, and try another and go, oh, yeah, this one's working. So you've got to find that little balance for yourself. No one else Is there can. any, like, absolute, no, don't do that kind of no, things? No, definitely really. not. No. So as long as the two bass notes are going in. Well, no, because, well, okay, so, oh, so, so, yeah, a bass line, there's sometimes things like, um, it's been ages since I've done it. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to actually play it again now, but there's this Red Hot Chili Pepper song called... Um, uh, uh, what's it called? Road Tripping. Now, the, I always played it like that. At the start, I can't remember. Everyone says, like, why can't you remember all the songs that you teach? Well, I just can't. But sorry. It's <laughs> too many. Something like that. And I always played it that way, and I was sure that that was what was going on. And when I transcribed it for a lesson, I discovered it wasn't that at all. He was going... with the bass line. Uh, Adam, chop, chop the bit and then speed it up so it's got like until I actually get it like around now. I think that's how it goes. It but sounds right. You get the idea that it's, the bass isn't doing like. Which is what I would have sworn it was because I got used to the yeah. thumb always doing that. So when I first transcribed that for a lesson, it was like, it's not that pattern. It was really difficult. I had to spend like <laughs> almost a whole day going. <laughs> because it was just so foreign, yeah. but it's, there's definitely nothing wrong with it. It's just you learn it a different way. You have to learn a new thing. Other songs don't have consistent picking patterns through it all the time. So if you're learning Vincent by Don McLean, do you Starry Starry Night? You must have heard Starry Starry Night. Starry Starry Night. Oh, yeah. But the, the pattern is different all of the way through the song. So there's not like a consistent finger picking pattern because he's all of it's doing the It's all these little fills and fiddles. There's no it's not like a normal finger style pattern. Mm. Um James Taylor's another one that does that. So that it's not like this where you have a finger style pattern. It's yeah. changing all the time. And I think yeah. that's a beautiful thing as well. It doesn't have to be... I think it's one of the dangers in this style is thinking that it has to have a pattern that's the same all the time. Mm. Most of the time that works really well, but very often you get these things that are a little different as well thrown in there just to keep you on your toes. Yeah? I'm trying to, I can't think of any now, but... I've tried to think of when I've learnt fingerstyle songs in the past, I didn't mm -hmm. notice that consistent bass beat. No, 
So the the consistent bass thing is very much a folk. A folk style. Yeah, it, okay. it, it, folk and country have those kind of things where. So it's just a, a style of it. It's a style of finger style, yeah. So it, 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 if you're doing, I don't know. I'm grabbing that third string like this with this callus on my third <laughs> finger. It's like, what are you doing there? Man, I'm going to have to do a whole heap of practice now on this. So it is, it is, there's a consistent pattern now, but it's not a consistent thumb. Yeah, it's not like a... Yeah, it's, it's a different, a very different sort of style of, a, sty a different style of finger style. Yeah. But that's just as legitimate. They're all fine. It just depends on the song. I think this consistent bass thing is a really nice style to get down and you can use it lots of different ways and um, yeah, but try it. You, you have to find the ones that you like that work for you, for your writing and the creative thing and, you know, find the stuff that you like. That's the key thing. Okay. Yeah? Cool. Okay. Um, so your finger style homework, yep. I want you to make up two finger style patterns. Okay. So just write the bass note down and try and put in some other notes. Let's do two with the consistent fingers, the consistent thumb, and one where it's a bit free form. Okay. See if you can come up with sort of some interesting finger picking pattern that works maybe on a different chord, just so you've got something different. Cool. Yeah? Yep. Okay, next on your list, transcribing. Mm -hmm. How did that go? Good. Yeah. Better than last time. Last time you yes. said, oh, so hard. Oh, no, so that trick you gave me where you kind of. So I, I didn't, I'll admit, I didn't put them in transcribing. Yeah, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. But I listened to the song and I'd kind of play the two bass notes and mm -hmm. could kind of hear a correlation between, mm -hmm. oh, that sounds like it appears in the song. And right. That sounds like, okay. And then. When I found it matched on both strings, I'd put the capo there and then I could kind of figure out what chords oh, it Oh, okay. And then obviously you can... That's an interesting... Right okay, that's... Yeah. <laughs> okay, but that, but that kind of works. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. To find the, it the two most, notes. And then I'd check it for... And obviously there's better ways of playing it, but having found those two notes and putting the capo yeah, there, yeah. you can work it out from there. So. Okay. It really... it. Any way will work, whatever, it, it, everyone has a different path with transcribing. Long, long term, you want to just hear it and go, oh, I think it's this. Mm. But that takes years and years and years of doing it. So you can't expect that. So whatever methods work for you right now is going to be good. Um, what were the songs that you did? Um, well, that, that one I played the Fingerstar to, I transcribed them both. I kind of joined the two yes, projects okay. together. <laughs> and what were, so what were the songs? Um, so that one with the weirdo timing was yeah. Bruises by Lewis Capaldi. So I okay. sacked that off for Fingerstyle. For Fingerstyle, but kept and, those tune. Yeah, okay. went on to that one that we did is Radioactive by... Oh, yeah. Um, Imagine Dragons. Yes. Cool. Okay. And then an old cover one, which was quite interesting because I played it the good old yeah, fashion yeah, yeah. style. Okay. Um, so I practiced it that way. But that's way. nice with finger style, those yeah, chords. Yeah, it did sound quite nice. What was it? it so, no, it's just... Good. The first chord, E. Mm -hmm. Which is the bass note for the E chord? Yeah. That's it, because now you get that nice flow, the ding, 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 ding. Oh, okay, got it. Ding. Oh. Now what you're doing actually sounds really interesting, this. Definitely nothing wrong with it, if you like the sound of a little different yeah. quite like that okay that that's the kind of thing that i could describe as a happy accident yeah where it's like <laughs> it wasn't really what you were supposed to do but it sounds cool anyway so you can just choose to keep it, it doesn't always have to be the set thing especially okay. I, I, you know i i don't want for a second you to think that there 
is a formula and a set way that everything should be done because it's not especially if you're trying to be creative and do something interesting it does it shouldn't be the set one you should be looking for that thing that was a little bit different or a bit weird or you didn't put the capo on right and it did this weird sound and that turned into a whole song or do you know what i mean that's kind of part of the point yeah yeah? Happy accidents. Yeah. <laughs> so on that note, though, I want you to transcribe for me uh, a song this week, a strummy, some sort of strummy song yep. that just uses open chords without using a capo, and I want you to figure it out using regular open chords. Yep. Okay. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So pick some poppy, easy Easy tune. song to do. Yeah. You can definitely hit, like, so say I transcribed it with the capo, mm-hmm. I then tried to listen to whether it was obviously played with the capital, mm-hmm. but you can definitely hear that it, it if it is or it isn't. isn't. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. Whether it, it rings out. But you'll find definitely a common thing as well is to have both open and capo at the same time. That sounds really nice when you get, especially like two finger style parts doing different ranges of the instrument. Yeah. Sounds like a 12 string. Yeah, it's cool. Um, cool. And was that did we set you as well a melody thing or was it, it was strumming in a finger style? Mm-hmm. No, no, transcribing finger style too. Yeah, and that was it. it. And, yeah, yeah. And finger gym. Finger gym. Okay. Yeah. Which you did some or not really? Some of. I did some with the metronome actually. Ah, good. And yeah. playing with the metronome. Yeah, it's it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going at it. <laughs> okay. Does it? Uh, is it starting to feel easier? Um, I think I feel I'm getting more confident with those two, but I'm struggling with the. Yeah, that's always going to be a struggle. With the little finger. But the playing. Hang on. Sorry, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do it quickly, hang on. Uh, metronome. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Good. Keep going. No, second thing. <laughs> no, not that one again. I find that so okay. Okay. Hard. Well, no, no. Of course, that's hard. That's probably just a little fast for for that speed to do with those fingers. So yeah. you want to do it at the speed that you can do all of them at. So. Probably I would have thought around 60. Let's try that. Doing the other. Do, do. Good. That's I it. literally okay. can't relax my hand when I'm doing that. Either. Well, it no, this is like that's a harder floor. exercise. So, like sixty was fine for that. You probably you could have done it maybe a tad, tad faster. But have a go at doing all of that set at sixty. Mm-hmm. Now, the next part of that exercise is to do the same patterns again, but flick offs or pull offs. Yeah. So instead of doing a hammer on there, you do play the first note and then flick off your finger. So that you get the second note ringing out underneath. Yeah. That's it. Now really feel flick it off. Flick it down. That's it. Good. See, did you see your first finger pulled the string down? Try yeah. and keep the first finger exactly where it is. Yeah, again. Better. <laughs> Don't let the first finger pull it down. There you go. That's it. Good. Try and think of the flick as being like this way, rather than like th- flicking it straight down. That's, yeah. Good. Again. Better. Good. So, your next challenge is to do the same thing, not with a metronome to start off with. Just literally going down, not fast. Okay, I'm just too fast to get through the demo. You'll find th- these things. That'll feel really awkward. This one will feel next to impossible. But have a little go at it. Yeah, just to see. 
again, this is, there's a whole heap of advantages to doing these kind of exercises to do with finger independence and control and all of that sort of stuff. Um, it's not something that you should be worried about if it's taken a little while or whatever, because it's part of, it's the journey of doing it that's yeah. going to be as beneficial as actually doing the exercise. Yeah. Spot on. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, newish thing for you this week. I think we might have touched on it before. Did we look at the G major scale? Do you remember ever learning that you're like, oh, the scales, I don't remember. Do you, what, is do you that remember the, this? The sh yeah, the shape things. Yes. Do you remember it? Vaguely. Vaguely. Second finger. Fourth finger. Good. Good. Second finger. That's it again. Oh, you've remembered the end though. That's fantastic. So I'm going to just, I want to talk a little bit about technique. Yep. I'm going to try and mimic what you did, the way that you did it. Okay. And I want you to see what's wrong with it. Okay. Shifting up and down. Now I'll, I'll play it. Do you see the bit? The big difference yeah. was the angle of the hand. Yeah. And that you had to shift your hand to reach the notes. I wasn't doing a very good job of mimicking you, by the way. You, you played far more correctly than I did. <laughs> I was struggling to play the right notes because I was trying to do this like weird fingering. But at the, at the, with your fingers at an angle like that, each time you went to play like with your little finger, your whole hand had to shift out of the way. Yeah. The fingers were flying quite far off the fretboard. And what we're really after is trying to get this, because we've already been looking at the, doing the finger stretching exercise in the gym. Yeah. So if we go first finger, Second finger, third finger, fourth finger. That's it, all of them down. Now, okay. What we're after now, round the first, round the little finger. That's it. Good. No, nah, that's it. Now first finger back there. That's it. That's it. Okay. Okay, try yep. and keep that nice and round. You're super, super tense. See if you can keep the fingers there while you relax your arm. Relax your forearm and your shoulder. That's it. More. Relax it, shoulder down. That's it. Now you can do that. Now, I, I because I'm holding your wrist there, I could feel all of the tension disappeared. And as soon as the tension disappeared, the fingers went and melted into the right spot. Okay, that might be a little far for you. So let's do a C major scale. So second finger, eighth fret. That's it. Little finger, that's it. Much better. Now I want you to try and do the same thing again, but I want you to try and keep your fingers in this nice, parallel position. Now this isn't the way that we play all the time. This is as much an exercise as anything else. So second finger, fourth finger, good. First finger, second, fourth, good. Yeah, you got it. That's it, that's it. And back down. Yeah, uh -uh. let's do it right from the top again. So, that. second, good, fourth, good, three, one, three, one, good, two, excellent, you're there. Now, can you see how much nicer the hand looked? Like the shape of the hand when you're doing it that way is so much better. The yeah. note quality of the notes is better because your fingers are sitting on the notes better than the, the funny angled thing. Yeah. So the task, first of all, is to try and keep the hand, the fingers in their assigned fret. Mm -hmm. The second thing I want you to do is to try and move the fingers as little as you, ha as you can. So... As you did it just now, it's kind of like this. 
which was good, like the finger placement, the position that you kept them nicely. Yeah. But what we're aiming for is this. Can you see how little they actually move away from the fretboard? Yeah. It's not this where they fly up. I call that flying fingers. <laughs> I mean, this is would be really common, but you can see what a huge difference. It looks easier, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks smoother and easier because yeah. the fingers aren't making unnecessary movements. When you're learning to do that, you have to do it real slow, like this slow. And I'm just thinking, right, none of my fingers are going to move more than a few mil off the strings. <laughs> and it just becomes a, a, the, the, the object of the game is controlling the fingers. It's not as much about the scale or anything else. It's just keeping the fingers where they should be and not letting them fly off the fretboard mm -hmm. at all. Try it one, one time. Keep them close. That's it. Slow, slower, slower, slow. Look how far that was. At least an inch off the. Keep it close. Keep it close. Slower. That's it. Second finger. Second finger. Second finger. That's it. Good. And that's still like at least a centimeter. <laughs> okay. Again, from the beginning. From the beginning. Just can you really, keep them down? really. Yeah, you can keep them down after you've played them on that string. That's it. That's it, get slower, that's it, second finger, that's it. Good, slower down, do, do, that's it. Don't that's rush, really yeah, I know. <laughs> that, that's it. Good. Second finger, second finger, that's it. Is this so a fun game? Hard. It's hard, isn't it? Okay. So this is one of those little five minutes of torture where actually it has a huge benefit because these little controlling movements, that it's most of the muscles in your, that control your fingers are in your forearm, but these really small little movements are more about the muscles that are actually in your fingers, mm. the fine motor skills. It's so hard to have them not so close that they're dampening yes. it, but not so, <laughs> yeah, really not so far away. But this will infect all of your other playing in a great way. So when you're playing chords, chord changes, little fiddles, all of those things will all be affected by your practice of doing this. I call it, this one's on the website as well. It's called the minimum movement exercise. Okay. Um, part of this journey, I want you to practice the C major scale, just play it up and down, not worrying about the fingers uh, being staying close to the strings. So just play it as you like to make sure that you're confident with the pattern. Yeah. I'd also like you to gradually be working this down toward the nut now to get the fingers a little bit more stretched. Yeah, that'll yeah. make a difference. The further you go, you can see how much easier it is for you to do it there than it is down here. Yeah. Right. So find the point where it's a bit stretchy, but you're still doing it right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not so far that you can't do it right anymore. You want to keep doing it correctly, mm -hmm. but find the point for you and then stay there for a little bit and then shift it a little bit further so gradually pushing it down oh but God. don't okay. be in a hurry okay. it could be like a month or two months away before it gets down there comfy okay. make okay. sense cool um that's gonna be the so we got the finger style we got the finger stretch exercise still probably no we're still doing finger stretch we're not finger gym minimum movement exercise yep uh transcribing i've set only one but as many as, as, many you, as can. you can. Yeah, that's fine. yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Other questions? Don't think so. Don't think so. No. Okay. The next kind of big project for us is going to be uh, replaying parts for your tune. For keep mm -hmm. me hanging on. Uh, you know the drums are done. They don't know the drums are done yet. We've just had a, done a session in the studio with the drums and the bass. Um, so. I'm going to send you probably today a um, the track as it is now, and then one with most of it stripped out, so enough for you to figure figure out what's going on. Yeah. And I'll send you one without a vocal as well. I want you to practice up seeing the vocal, mm -hmm. and I want you to 
reconsider the guitar parts that you've got okay. and see what what because I gave you that pattern I said okay do this down up up yeah. it was like let's just get the song going here's, yeah. a, here's a little pattern stick with it have a listen to how the song's feeling now and you've got all of these other skill sets going on so like what is what way do you want to do it which way do you want to play the chords do you want to try using it with a cap like the same chords but with a capo as the second part mm -hmm. like I can I can I'd like to play some parts on it, right? Yeah, but I don't want to do the majority of it. I want you to actually be doing it, particularly the rhythm guitar and the, the strummy sort of parts. Okay. So I want you to explore that a little bit. As, you know, that's the kind of thing where we could do it in the studio and I can direct you to it, but I'd like you to find the ones that you feel okay. fit the song best for you, how you imagine it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. I think we'll hopefully see you for one more lesson before Christmas break and do. all of that. Yeah. So um might even try and get recording of that song. We'll see how it goes cool. and how quickly the production falls into place. Uh, any other questions mm -hmm. on stuff or things that you wanted to touch on? No? no? no. Okay. Say bye-bye to internet. Bye. We'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.